and goes, okay. Yeah. And there you go. Um, I, in fact, I have an Arcos 32, a 3.2 inch tablet <laughs> that it's basically a glorified MP3 player. Works fine for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Android, um, Android based stuff is really nice. Oh, you could do a lot with it. Uh, it's fantastic, I think. Um, it doesn't play... Um, <clears throat> oh, someone in the chat room recommends the Sansa Clip Zip. It has flax support. There you go. Out of yeah. the box, too, which is good. With the Arcos, you have to do like some codec finagling. Um, and you kind of have to... Um, maybe sometimes the hard drive isn't fast enough for flag because... Yeah, well, it's... it's, it's five. Well, it's flash-based, so, I mean, it might work. Um, it should. It should but... work, but you never know. Uh, you, can the I, I guess the iPod could support Flash, couldn't it? Support it? Uh, flak? Flak. Flak. No, Not Flash? Support. Not Flash. Nothing supports won't Flash. Won't never support Flash, but Flak won't actually... Flash. No, it won't, no, won't it? No, because it has the Apple fully lossless audio code. Oh, they yeah. They have their it's... own... Oh, right. They have their... Uh, there may be an app right. that does it, but not... No, it doesn't. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, CNET has a list of FLAC compatible MP3 players. Just Google it, uh, FLAC MP3 players. Uh, but yeah, the Arcos one works great. You can get the other codecs on uh, on Android, and they should be able to play FLAC. Yeah. But uh, we have a direct recommendation for the Sansa Clip Zip uh, in the chat room. It plays FLAC perfectly, according to a member of the chat room. So you can check that out. I would go to the art with the Arcos just because you get the MP3 player and more. And Android. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, this one comes from... Oh, excuse me. Oricron. Got a little computer problem. Every now and then my screen will go black, and then after a few minutes it comes back on and says the video card stopped working and has fixed itself. What's up with that? How do I fix it? That's usually driver issue. Yeah, in fact, I get that sometimes too on my machine. It's a dri- It's not the video card itself failing. It's the driver halting or or in a cycle, and Windows is smart enough nowadays, finally, to reset the video card and actually instead, instead of, of going, oh god, blue screen, instead of blue right, screening, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, instead of blue screening, Windows is smart enough to do that now. It's a driver issue. There, there are bugs out the ass with modern drivers that they. It's it's just the modern thing of software. Ninety nine percent of the time it'll work, but you know you you get that one instance when you're playing TF two. And they've got the right set of polygons calling the right set of shadows with the right set of shaders. And it just craps itself. It's like, I don't know what to do. So Windows resets it. <laughs> how how it work? What? <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Ilian or Ilan 121. I don't know. Uh, it looks. I can't tell if that's an I or LL or what, but sorry. Um, <clears throat> I've been in need of buying a new desktop. I didn't, oh, I'm sorry. That's Bluefire. We just answered that question. Okay. Um, and Sable's question. Then there's a uh, Drakenfell six six six. The number of the beast. Yeah. Uh, I got a new electric razor. Uh, even uh, ever used the triple blade rotary type ones? I've only had normal blades. Any tips for use from Serial Killer? I have one. I don't like it. All right. Why not? Okay, that does nothing. It does not remove beard. Oh. Now, what is this? Uh, it's Panasonic Triple... It's a cheap one, so there may be better ones All out right. there. But... You know those electric razors that have uh, that have three circular heads? Yeah. He has one of them. Yeah. Any recommendations uh, for use? Uh, the thing with electric razors is that it could take upwards of about six months for you to get used to them. Used to using them. Yeah. So oh, uh channel is calling for me to grow a beard. I have a beard, but I don't want beard everywhere. I want beard everywhere. Also also a problem with uh, electric razors is if you get your hair if you skip a day or something or you skip like two days and then you try and use it, no. It's got to be exactly a certain length cuz if it gets too long, no. Yeah, some no. of them fail, yeah. Uh but no, give it a shot. I mean, you just got it for Christmas, so you might as well use it, you know. <clears throat> See if you like it. You don't. You don't know if you like electric until you use it. Uh, I know a, lot, a couple of my old bosses loved using them. I know Chris Perillo uses one. Uh, my old boss at Brainview used them. They think they're much more convenient than the old bra- uh, than the old style blades. They don't like using. Um, they don't like using shaving cream, so they use electric. 
Uh, they think the old style is just too messy, and you know, electric provides a lot of uh, a lot of benefits in terms of sucking up the hair, <laughs> so it's not all over the place. So uh, play around with it, see if you like it. I mean, everyone's different. Me personally, I, yeah, I use disposables. And give give it about a week or two weeks, <coughs> and then yeah. you know if you like it or not. <coughs> all right, Mr. Crow asks, or the Faustian man. Uh, last question for me is: Four gigabytes of RAM enough for a computer for heavy gaming? Currently, yes. Next yeah. generation of consoles, no. Because right now the hopefully PC, no. Well, hopefully. yeah. Right now, PC com- uh, gaming is limited by consoles because developers design for the consoles. So the consoles can only do so much. Your computer can do way more than the consoles, but the game only accesses as much as a console can do. So four gigabytes, that's about that's past what most consoles have, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, wait, four... they have two hundred fifty-six and two hundred fifty-six for video. Yeah, four gigabytes. You're fine. You're fine. Now uh, it, it depends on the games you're playing on the PC. For example, Skyrim, you does take advantage of more than four gigabytes of RAM. Um, <clears throat> well, no, you, you you have to modify Skyrim to get the four gigabytes. Well, they finally updated the they finally updated Skyrim with a patch to do it. So, are the dragons still flying backwards? Yes, they are still flying backwards. They never fixed great that. Great patch, great patch, guys, great patch. There are not many sixty-four bit games out there, and uh, yeah. those are the <clears throat> benefit from. Yeah, there's really not going to be sixty-four bit games for a while. Uh, three Marlets asks, just got a new two terabyte external hard drive for my uh, cri- for for my Christmas uh, for Christmas. My uh. My internal is only 250. I'm going to transfer my Steam folder to the new drive. Oh. Uh, go to Isn't Program that... Files, go to Steam, and click and drag it. Um, no. I know. Actually, Steam's that's the worst way to do it, because that won't work. Uh, <laughs> what you'll probably need to do is actually reinstall Steam and re-download everything onto the mm, drive. Nope. No, you can you, you can do it through Steam. No, you can Are uh, there tools for it? Steam Mover or something? Oh, there's a tool to do it? Oh, okay. It what it does it it moves to the external drive and then creates a directory junction. Oh, nice, nice. You can do that manually as well. Yeah. And directory junction of that that maps your program files folder to your proper place and stuff. It's a symlink in Linux to everybody who might know what that is. <laughs> uh, everyone is making suggestions and different suggestions. Someone says copy Steam app, Steam EXE, and run Steam EXE. Uh. <coughs> So basically, uh, you can. Uh, Volrul says you can copy the entire Steam folder uh, yeah. in a drag and drop method if you verify game cache on all the games. After you do that, you try that too. Um, I think the safest method, at least in terms of having all the registry entries correct, is is basically reinstalling Steam in this in the in that in the directory you want to reinstall it in. Uh, but Steam actually has an FAQ on its site uh, if you want to look it up. Uh, via via Google, it actually actually has an FAQ on how to accomplish moving Steam to someplace else. Oh boy, the questions are coming in uh, fast and furious on uh, on Twitter. <clears throat> uh, Kazuki, I've heard about people having two video cards for the PC. Worth it or no? Radeon sixty seven seventy right now. No, not for you. Uh, what do you plan on doing that you need uh, two video cards? Mm, I had two video cards because I had four monitors. Well, three well, monitors. Yeah, four monitors, I guess. Uh, I since I got some, <laughs> Do you really? Since I got my MD one, it's not. It could connect six monitors, so I'm happy with that. Um, I I have two video cards. Uh, one of them's the, the for my main monitor. It's the GeForce 560. Um, you know, it, it's it's for gaming and whatnot. The other one's a GeForce 210, and that it's just it. Originally, NVIDIA had some issues with getting two different monitors to run at two different resolutions. Mm. So that if you tried to put two monitors on the same card, it would go to the size resolution that the max of of the lesser monitor. So so it could only go as high as 1024 by 768 with my old monitor. It couldn't go any higher. It couldn't do two different resolutions. So I got the this little cheap. One for my other PCIe slot. All right, fair enough. Um, but nowadays, I think they fixed that, so you can do it with two. I just like keeping it that way because it gives the other monitor its own dedicated GPU. If you're going to do Crossfire, I would say it's really not worth it. Uh, if you want the performance boost from a 6770, I'd say go up to the 6950 because that is 
pretty much just two cards in one. Yeah. Um, and it'll save you the headache of trying to have crossfire working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it at this point. Uh, there's nothing that's going to tax it that much. 6770 is more than enough right now. Yeah. Um, the, the, the performance boost you get from having two cards in SLI or Crossfire is offset by the cooling headaches, the glitches certain games have trying to run Crossfire. The power headaches. Oh yeah, you have to get a god-awful power supply to do two video cards, do medium or high-end video Yeah, you're looking, at a, you're looking at a kilowatt power supply or more. Yeah. Yep. Unless, one thing... Um, I might advocate is if you really want physics and you have an NVIDIA card lying around and you have an AMD as your primary, then you can get some custom drivers that can enable physics because NVIDIA kind of shut that down. That's Omega, Omega drivers. Yep. Now, the reason people have multiple video cards is for performance reasons. They want higher FPS. They want to anti-alias everything. Uh, 16x, AA, 8x, MSAA, all that crazy stuff. You don't need it. Yeah. This one comes from Justin Coolidge. Dear Lord Gadda Nash, my wireless internet receiver on my Dell Latitude D420 stops detecting networks that I have to re click repair. This happens randomly, and I don't know how to fix it, so I hope you can help, and Merry Christmas. We had the same thing earlier, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Um... Mm. Now, considering it's a laptop, does it do this with all networks you try, or just your home system? Uh, Is he watching right now? See if he can answer us. I think it happens for all networks. If it's all networks, rrr. yes, all driver. It's a driver. Yeah, it's a driver issue. He yeah. says uh, he said he says it works for all. It says it does it for all. I think that's a driver issue. Complete utter it's driver issue. Yeah. If it's a pro wireless Intel, get the newest one. It's very hidden, but yeah. you can find it. Yeah, you'd have to you have to search. You'll have to do a Google search. You'll have to search for uh, go under uh, device manager. Look for your wireless driver, uh, your wireless card. Find out what make and mo model it is. Do a Google search and yeah, find don't, it. Yeah, don't don't search for it on, with Dell. Go, go don't Google. don't search on Dell. Go Google. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. This one comes from Gollum's Ink Spot, Ginky. The creator of the Kamaku, which you can find at lordcat.com. Nash, you're in the Kamaku. I know. Yeah. Weird. I'm, a, I'm a toaster. What the hell? It's it's well, it's because of this. Oh wait, no, that's no, it's because of the Tuesday Tech Talk one. Never mind. Fuck it. I'm a toaster. You're a toaster. Well, you're on the blue team too. I'm on the red team. I don't know why I'm a toaster. <laughs> you are. Uh, can you suggest an alternative program for getting music onto my iPod? Without using iTunes, no, nope. That Suck. Apple, Apple has the way. This is Apple has reason. fucked you over. Yeah, there is no method to transfer stuff to and from your iPod, your iPhone, your iPad, except iTunes, and iTunes is an awful pile of crap. Some iPods work with Media Monkey. Yeah, but it's Not only certain revisions. Only certain yeah. ones. Yeah. Might might want to try that. Sorry, Ginky. We need iTunes. Hey, by the way, Blah Blah made a doodle of how to do it. Check this out. It's fucking awesome. My top? This is a doodle by Blah Blah. It looks beautiful. I think it's cool as hell. Hey, look at that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's... Good lord, my mouth! <laughs> He's got a huge mouth, dude. Ah. Ah. <laughs> That's from Blah Blah, man. That is awesome. That's... He's even got the mole on my face. Oh, good lord, man. <laughs> He's got the mole on my face. Hey, look at that. It's amazing. Jesus. The attention to detail this guy has is crazy. God, lord. I love it. That's nice. Very nice. I absolutely love it, man. I love the fact that he calls it a doodle. <laughs> <clears throat> He's that that dude is so talented, man. I am I am so so glad to have him part of the community. <clears throat> Alrighty, Melody Rose asks so via Twitter. My laptop has two video cards, Nvidia and Intel. It's not a video card. No. I refuse to call it that. HDMI <laughs> HDMI out is through Intel. As I use the external monitors, Intel do all the work. Yes. 
Yeah. Uh, you're, well, it may, it may not do all the work, but it is the bottleneck. Uh, it depends on what exactly Windows is doing and, and how exactly you're... Like, if you're going to play a game, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. But it doesn't matter how many frames you render because with the, with the NVIDIA card, because at the end of the day, your bottleneck's going to be the Intel card that's processing everything and, and pu- outputting it through HDMI. I don't, um... I don't recommend that. <laughs> I don't remember recommend doing that. I'm sorry. Um, do you have any other video connectors that maybe the NVIDIA card could use? For example, do you have, say, uh, mini DVI or um, display or mini display port on there? <clears throat> uh, see if you have any other video connectors um, that maybe uh, the NVIDIA card can use. We can get maybe an adapter to to output to HDMI. Um, see if you could do that. All right, uh, Lamg. Lucio Machado asks, Frankenstein here... Oh, hey, Frankenstein. I should have just read your message. <laughs> Frankenstein here. This is what happens if I left any electrical appliance tune- turned off for too long. He sends us a picture. Is this what happens when I leave any electrical appliance turned off for too long? What the hell am I looking at, Lucy? Louise? This is what happens if any electrical appliance turn off for too long. <clears throat> hey, we're on the front page of Twitch TV. Hi, Yay! Everybody. Hi, Twitch TV. Seven hundred twenty-eight to... people watching. Good God! Hey, I'm trying to look at. Oh, we're the only ones. We're the only ones doing a Christmas Day marathon stream. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we win. We are awesome. Oh, the guys outside having Christmas. Everyone else is like, oh, "No, nah, yeah. screw Twitch TV." I'm like, "No, we are Twitch TV, man. <laughs> we're awesome." Uh, I am looking at this, and what, what? in the fuck what? am I Where's looking at? Pi- I don't know what you're looking at. Yeah, I'm trying to... Let me give you the link. I don't know what I'm looking at. Can I don't know. Hang on. Everyone in the channel is like, what? What is it? I'm trying... Well, I want to... Ex- like, if I, Before I show the picture, I want to explain what it is. I just sent it to you in the chat. Um, but okay. uh, let me... Uh, I'll, I'll show it on the desktop here. I don't know. Maybe they can help me out. I don't know what I'm seeing here. Um... What? When I leave any appliance turned off for too long, this is what happens. Oh, it's all dusted and rusted out. Wait, when you leave it off for too long, it gets rusty? What? Is th- oh. Or is or is there rust buildup? I have... Like, wow. Oh, wow. That's not look good. That does not, not look good. good. How did you do that? What the hell happened here? This is interesting. And that's any appliance in your house does that? Every appliance in your house does that. Do you live by the ocean? Hmm? Yeah, that's... Or on a boat? Or on a boat? Or near salt water in any capacity? God, that, that's horrible. The poor computer. I'm thinking, or um, he lives right next to the beach. Get a dehumidifier, dude. Actually, yeah. get several dehumidifiers. Yeah, because the uh, the, it. the 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 static electricity is is that because there's there's basically static electricity all around your uh, you're all all around your electricity. It's just not you know. Well, that's an interesting picture. That's that has nothing to do with uh, <laughs> no, with what we're diagnosing. But whatever. Um. But I think the static electricity is interacting with the uh, with the water in the air, and it's causing rapid uh, oxidation. Yeah, that's, that's corrosion, and I've got a mouse on my face. Get it off! Get it off! Oh, mouse! Mouse! Sorry. Get it off! <laughs> Get it off. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking Frankenstein. You need a dehumidifier. Yeah, that this is the part of the problem living in coastal areas or living anywhere near the ocean. Yeah, it, could, um, well, it could be corrosion through the wires as well, as Harith yeah. says. Oh, boy. You need a dehumidifier. That, yeah. That's your... You need a dehumidifier. That's the only real solution I can tell right now. Sorry. Um, that's... Yeah, that sucks, but yeah. Wow, and that's mm. not a bad system either. God. Yeah, it's not a terrible system, but... 
I see SATA cables. I see an XFX card. Yeah. I see, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, oh, uh, well, Harris has a solution. You could put on zinc plates, which will eat up the essential corrosion. It'll oxidize first. Yep. Um, but you'll have to be replacing those zinc plates um, over the life yeah. of the computer. It, it's not a bad solution. Uh, in fact, I'd probably recommend zinc plates and a humidifier. Yeah. Dehumidifier. Um, sorry, man. That sucks. There's nothing you can do to repair that either. Alrighty, uh, we got some more questions. How to do it question. I'm running, uh, this is from HG Gundam Reviews, or Todd M. I'm running an AMD Athlon X264. I was wondering if installing X86 version of Windows 7 on it would be bad. No? An X what? X86 version of Windows 7 instead of the 64. See, here's the thing. No. What you don't understand about 64-bit is that it is x86 but it's using the AMD 64-bit extensions. In fact, the Intel yeah. uh, processors use the AMD 64-bit extensions as well because basically AMD developed them first and Intel was like, yeah, yeah we'll license it. <laughs> yeah, we could either completely recreate this. Or just license it. Or just license <laughs> what they already did. Let's, yeah, it works. Let's just do what they already did. <laughs> yeah. And their 64 wasn't that good. Yeah, they their 64 came, was yeah. kind of lacking too. So, um, There you go. Uh it's essentially x86, so it'll run x86 code. Yeah. So getting the x86 version is not bad. The only real difference being you're not going to run 64-bit applications, and you can't use the extended memory of a 64-bit system on, an, on a 32-bit uh, operating system, which is what the x86 version of Windows 7 is, 32-bit. So you'll be limited to 4 gigabytes maximum in your system yeah. and only like 3.28 addressable. So yeah, something 30, like that. Yeah. Here's the and, difference. Thir 32 bits... Memory has an address space. And 32 bits, math. We have math going on here. 32 bits only allows for a certain permutation of addresses that can be addressed. It's, it's 3.28 uh, gigabytes of RAM is when those levels of addresses runs out. Yeah. And it's like, it's like running out of zip codes. You, the the computer has no idea where to you know the mailman has no idea where to send the letters yeah. so they go they can't use them 64 bit exponentially is it exponentially or ge, ge, geometric it is exponentially that it's exponentially is, yeah it exponentially increases the amount of addressable space so it it's adding more zip codes so more memory can be addressed so, yep. there you go. By the way, for all of you new viewers out there, and I know you're the new viewers out there because we're just over 700 viewers right now, uh, this is how to do it. We're doing a how to do it Christmas Day marathon for all of your, your tech gifts, gadgets, and gizmos, and, and uh, well, if you've just had problems, we want to help fix them. Uh, so, if you want to ask your questions... Uh, you can add me on Twitter. Uh, I'm at LordCat, L-O-R-D-K-A-T. You can add Nash and Mark, too, Nash076, and uh, Mark is something. What's, yeah. what's your Twitter, What's your Mike, Twitter, Mark? Mark? Um, Maluku Sato. Sato, that's what it was. What a, I knew it was well, Maluku like something. I call it, like I call it Maluku Sato. Yeah, and you can also <laughs> go to live.lordcat.com uh, and go into the chat room there. Uh, there's a chat room on the right-hand side of live.lordcat.com. Log into the chat room. Say hi to us. Hi. We don't bite. Uh, and uh, we does. And I just wanted to get this little promo in now. Might as well. We do how to do it live every Tuesday. We're not going to do it this Tuesday because we're doing this 20... No, not 24-hour. We're doing this marathon. Not doing, I'm not doing a 24-hour marathon, Nash. Relax. We're okay. doing this... We're doing this how to do it marathon. So uh, not this Tuesday, but usually every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at LiveDolorCat.com. We also do how to do it where we help you with your tech questions. There we go. All righty. I got that in. Now, uh, I have a question here from Thomas. Otter Menon 123. I run a Gigabyte 460 OC on, in SLI on a 500 watt, and I want to get a better PSU. What should I get? I've also got an i5 2500K and 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, running an SLI 500 watt, you're definitely going to want to go up. Um, I, I might say even go to like the 700 watt level. Uh, yeah. What type do you want? Right. I, Zalman Rapid. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I've had really good luck with Zalman power supplies, oddly enough. Uh, I, they're, they're, a very, they're, they're, the, they're a silent component company, and they really make silent fans, but 
their power supplies I've had really good luck with. Uh, so I could recommend those. Um, Seasonic, Seasonic, Antec. An- oh yeah, Antec as well. Very good power supplies. Corsair. Corsair. Uh, um, I like the Be Quiet ones. Yeah. I don't know if, if you have them over there. A thing you should look for when you're getting them, they make sure it's 80 plus certified. And there are different levels of 80 plus. There's bronze, silver, gold, or just 80 plus. But just make sure whatever power supply you get is 80 plus. That will, it's it's better for your system. It's better for your power bill. It's it's better for everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dresd has a question. Uh, right now, I have a pair of dynamic stereo headphones, MDR V150. I got them for $20, and they were great. However, they are now rather dead. <laughs> My question to you is that I'm looking for new headphones, and I'm wondering if it's worth to pay the extra money for sound canceling or not, and if you could, uh, if you could recommend a pair. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Well, Merry noise Christmas Noise canceling? Active noise canceling, don't use it. Uh, active yeah. noise canceling sucks. I don't, I don't really like it. Um... It, I, for whatever reason, for active noise canceling, one of two things happens for me. Either it's off, it's 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 just so very slightly out of sync that it sounds like noise, or mm-hmm. it just doesn't work very well. And it it's some for sometimes they'll start canceling out the stuff coming out of the headphone itself, which is just like well that sucked. Uh, and also it doesn't work with really loud noises like jet engines. So no. you know it's like well that's a waste. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if you if you get it to get on a plane, so you don't you're sitting by the engine and you don't want to hear it. You it doesn't hear work. It. it doesn't work. There you go. Um, do I have anything I would recommend? I don't want to recommend one specific pair of headphone brands. Now, obviously, I've got these headphones and they're big black things, but these are my studio monitoring headphones, which uh, have worked fantastically for the past year. Um, I might have to get a new pair soon, but uh, just because the cushioning's all worn out on it. I use these. AKG K55, got these for $20. They work fantastic. See, the only reason I'm not recommending these is because these are like $140 headphones. Yeah. And they have, they have fantastic sound reproduction. If you are looking for headphones, portable headphones that you can take on the plane or something, um, and you need Space Saver, one of the things I'd recommend are the in-ear headphones with the silicon yeah. replaceable tips. Yeah. Uh, not, the, not the cheap plastic crap that Apple gives you with their, with their iPads and iPhones and crap like that. I hate those. And especially the cheap, big, black ones. Do I have one here? Nope. Yeah, hang on, I've got them here. Yeah, uh, let me take these out. I want to show you these because you know exactly... You'll know what I'm talking about as soon as I show them to you. These, these fucking things. These things suck. I hate these so much. Oh, I hate these. Look at these things. They don't fit in yeah. my ear canal. They hurt. They suck. See, I'm using that right now. I hate those. Oh, they... but yeah, the little silicon ones are nice too. Especially considering you can take that silicon bit off if it gets gunked up and wash Shit. it. <laughs> well, see, my biggest problem is that these are made. Th- these are all made to the same fucking size, and I have yeah. small ear canals, and uh... I cannot. It, it hurts to wear these things. So yeah. that's why I recommend the uh, the silicon one uh, because it, it it fits now. Uh, if you really want really, really, really high quality audio, and you want a really, really high quality fit, um, another. Well, by the way, another reason I recommend the silicon ones is because when they're in ear and they're they sort of they kind of mold around your ear canal, they 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 sort of block out a lot of sound. Yeah. Um, if you really want really, really, really high quality ones, there are now available. I forgot the brand name, but they are custom moldable silicon in ear uh, headphones. Now, they're made to be studio monitors, but they are very extremely high quality. And what they, what they are is it, it comes with a big black box you put on your head, essentially. And it will actively mold the silicon headphones to your ear canal. It has almost 100% sound, uh, uh, sound cancellation, essentially, because yep. it blocks out all the sound from your ear canal. They're expensive. That's awesome. They're expensive. They're like $300 for a kit. I, w- I would rec- uh, um as far as recommendation go, don't get a Beats Audio. Don't don't get Beats oh, Audio. No. no, please don't. Beats Audio are the monster cables of headphones. Or Skull Candy. They... Don't get Skull Candy either. Don't get Skull Candy. Yeah. No. Um. Don't get Bose either or <laughs> anything labeled Bose. It's look. Bose makes some decent speakers, uh, and they do have decent set top devices. But in terms of headphones, the Bose headphones I've used have sucked. And my Sennheiser, I used to buy Sennheiser, but they broke. They one 
the first one, <laughs> I got a year out of them. The next one, two months, and the last one I bought, just it came off the out of the box broken. So I uh, got some Sony ones now, and I'm happy with them. Turtle Beach headsets. Someone asked an opinion of this. Turtle Beach are good stuff. It's not too bad. Uh, it's not too yeah. bad. Um, <laughs> Serial Killer has another question for us. Any problems? All right. I can't find my, my remote. What's the best method of how to find it? All right. I can actually I can actually tackle this one for you. Oh. Um, now, uh, in terms of finding it currently, search around your house, search the cushions, all that shit. Once you do find it, there, there are products out there that will track your remote via GPS or via GSM signal via 3G that you can attach to your remote. You can open up an app on your iPhone and find it Where on Google I? Maps. Or much cheaper, they <laughs> make these little devices that beep. Yeah, you so you too. just attach it to your your remote. You push the button. It beeps. You track the sound without a GPS on your remote. A satellite does not need to know where your remote control is. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's actually not made for the remote control. It's actually made for laptops and and things like that. Okay, yeah, that. But your rem, your TV. Remote. But I recommend. But you know what? Sometimes you lose your remote and you want to know within a few meters where the hell it is. There you go. <laughs> it's not going to tell you its elevation, which is going to suck if you live in a multi-story house, but, you know. It's in the ceiling. No, it's not. Uh, oh, no, not you. From Chrome Fail. <coughs> uh, actually, this is uh, unbeknownst JM. At Lord Cat, Flash keeps crashing on Chrome every two weeks or so for me. Is there a way to fix that? No. No. This, See, this is the problem with, with, with uh, Chrome's implementation of Flash. Yeah. It's built in. Yeah. You can't uninstall it. You can't download a newer version. You can't download an older version. It's built into Chrome. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no. Um, there's, there's really no solution for that. Uh, other than, you know, saying Flash sucks. I'm sorry. Flash sucks. It's still vital to the web. We still kind of need it because, let's face it, HTML5, not ready for prime time yet. No. But it's a pain in the butt, and when it's gone, we will all be happy. Mishma has a question for us. What's your opinion of the GT520 HD NVIDIA PCIe 2.0 1GB DDR3? Requires a minimum of 400 watt PSU, and my PC has a 400 watt PSU. Don't get 1GB um, VRAM. Get two. It's not that yeah, get, much. Get also, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. In this modern age, there is no reason to buy a video car with DDR3. No reason. It's it's slower. It's it's a waste of your money. Spend the extra twenty dollars to get a car with DDR5, really, because otherwise yeah. you're just you're just costing yourself money at that point. I would say get the 550 GTX. Yeah. Oh man, how long have we been going? Uh, did we, come we back started around two. We came back from break around. Oh, we've been going for an six. hour and a half. All right. Yeah. You know, another thirty minutes. Yeah, another thirty minutes. We'll take another break. All right. Uh, Vigby, Vig, Vib Gork. See, we'll call him Tim. Tim writes, "I want to get a good audio interface and mixer for my home recording studio with a small oh. budget. Any recommendations?" Ha ha. Um. Now, as long as you don't need it to be USB, if you're just looking for a mixer, Soundcraft makes beautiful ones. I've been using Soundcraft mixers and whatnot for years and years and years and years. Um, the Soundcraft Notepad, I believe it was. Um, well, anyway, they have small ones they have that come with as, as little as four inputs all the way up to 16. The four input ones are fantastic. Um I, I, I'm currently using a really old one, which, again, we said about audio devices. They never go obsolete. I'm using one that was made in the early 2000s, and it's a Spirit Notepad Folio from Soundcraft. Great preamps on it. Beautiful, really clean ones. Um, I, I, I hardly recommend uh, Soundcraft's units. They're, 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 they're fantastic. Now, I will say this, um, and this goes to any mixer you get 
Um, if the mixer does not have an on switch or on off switch, make sure you put it on a switch like uh, a switched strip, power strip that's got an on off switch. I burned out a mixer by leaving it on constantly. Ooh. And the entire mixer died because it was on a surge protector. But just being left on constantly, it finally said, that's it, I'm done, no more. Mm. Yeah, so now I leave mine plugged into a switch and I turn it off. Some of them do not have on-off switches. They're just, you plug in and it goes. So that's You should switch to. everything off except for printers. True. Yes. Um, actually, in the chat room, at Lordcat, L-O-R-D-K-A-T. We have an interesting question here. It's a guitar question, Nash. It's actually two of them. This is from Mudrick. My Mesa Boogie Mark V has a lot of buzzing and humming when I turn it oh, up at boy. all. I replaced the tubes, and it got worse. So it has the old tubes in it now. It's only a year old. I'm kind of worried. Mesa Boogie. Okay. Mesa buzzing. Boogie, by the way, the one uh, Metallica uses. Yes. Buzzing with tube amps. <clears throat> Get ready for some fun. Hey. It comes from everywhere. This is the problem with, with tube amplifiers. They sound fantastic, but they are so sensitive to their environment. First of all, you got those new uh, compact fluorescent bulbs in your house oh. that are energy efficient. And they, they work. Get rid of them. They are RF so. noise. Get get you can't have them around a tube amp. They gotta go. You have to get some of the old style bulbs. You can't you can't have them around Wi Fi sometimes. Right. Um, another option you could use would be LED bulbs, but you just you cannot use fluorescent compact fluorescence or any kind of fluorescent light bulb around a tube amp. Um, another option is uh, it's a grounding thing, but it kind of works pretty well. Um. The inside of that wooden box that your uh, the tube amplifiers normally have a little the tube amp and then it has a box it goes into and that that's the head for your tube amplifier. Um, an easy way to help with this is to get uh, 3M makes copper foil tape and it's not just plain old tape that's copper. It's actually uh, trans. It's actually uh, what's transduction. I want to say transduction, but uh, conductive, right? Conductive on both sides. It's very important that you get the type that's conductive on both sides. You can put this this copper foil tape, and I did this, and it worked really well. On the inside, what are you doing? Oh, my camera fell out of focus. I don't know what the hell oh, yeah. happened. It was um, just like I'm going to focus on the wall behind you. Yeah. Anyway, th this two. I, that's why I don't use autofocus. Autofocus is bad. Um, the, this conductive tape, uh, it's copper foil. It's not like hundreds of dollars, but it is a little pricey. It's like $20 for a roll. But what you do is you take this copper foil, you put it all along the inside of that wooden cabinet, and then you make sure you have a little wire that's going to the chassis of your tube amplifier. And you don't have to you don't have to solder it in. Just tape it in place with that two side conductive tape, and then find a screw on your uh, on your chassis that goes to the metal of the chassis. Is that a doggy? Wrap... I have no doggy. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind. Sorry. But, yeah, uh, wrap the, around that screw. Screw it in until it's secure to your case. This will increase the grounding. This will also shield. This is it's making a, a tiny little Faraday cage, sort of. Yeah. But it will increase the shielding around your tube amplifier and stop the buzzing. And as long as that tape is in contact with any other piece of that tape, then it is all the way around. It's shielded. This helped me tremendously when I built mine, and it, it helps block out more of the RF. Now, the reason the new tubes are more sensitive is. Sad to say it, you may have got microphonic tubes. Um, what this means is the tubes that you got are picking up sound and transmitting it to the, the amplifier. This does happen sometimes. Those new tubes you probably got are probably bad, and you'll need to replace them. Uh, I pro are, you, are these the 12XYs? <clears throat> or uh, probably the preamp tubes are what's causing it. 
Um, you may have to either get get new tubes or if they are good, you may need to get tube shields for them. Check into that. They they make shields for the tubes to stop microphonic noise like that. So you also have that's another my question. best. Oh, what's the other question? Uh, if I bend at all on my Breedlove twelve string guitar, it goes out of tune too much for me to keep playing. It has got the stock Grover tuners on it. Any suggestions? Um. Oh God, those are awful. Um. Yeah, this is a problem with anytime. You've seen the whammy bar on the guitar, right? Yeah. That's that little bar that sits underneath the strings, and you pull it, and it, 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 not, it, it, yeah. Yeah, well, it also knocks it out of tune. Yeah, or you can just bent, pull the string down itself to, to go up or down an octave. It's, it's a neat little trick. Um, but this can Well, I, I say octave, probably using the wrong word, but you can change the notes that you're, you're playing just by bending the string up and down. Yeah. Um, but what this does is the strings are tuned a step. Thank you. Not an octave, a step. Thank you. I'm using the wrong word. The strings are tuned in such a way that the uh, the tuners, um, the the br- I, I'm probably using the wrong word. The nut. That's that's the word. Yes, it's called a nut. It's this little groove where the uh, where the strings go just at the start of the fretboard. All the way back to your um, to the bridge uh, and where the the strings fit there. Um, all of this has to be set properly, and if you f- screw with it, it goes well. Screw that! We're out of tune. Um, you may the tuner new tuners locking tuners especially. That's the easiest replacement. Um, locking tuners can be replaced with just a small wrench or a pair of pliers. You just turn the nuts off of it, pull the locking, pull the old tuners out, put the new ones in. Locking tuners help you to keep to stay in, in tune, and it's a cheap and easy replacement. A less cheap replacement, which requires more work, in fact, it may even require taking it to a luthier, is something called. A GSR roller nut, or even a graphite nut. Graphite nuts are simpler. Um, that little set of grooves where the strings, they're almost to the tuners at the very far end of the fretboard. Um, that nut, that's that's where the strings move back and forth oh, tw- a little bit, and this can knock them out of tune. Using a graphite nut makes <clears throat> the movement go a lot smoother, so it stays in tune easier. Or, conversely, they've made what's called a roller nut, which takes either two little uh, ball bearings (coughs) or rollers, and the string goes over that, so it moves much more smoothly as well. So, my honestly, the cheapest way to see if you can stop this from happening, get a set of locking tuners. This will prevent them from growing out of tune. If If you want to put a little more money into it, you know a luthier... You can do something about it. Get a roller nut or a graphite nut. But... Captain, Captain Krebs says, be a man. Put a locking nut on it. Oh, uh, lock, uh, locking nuts <sighs> and Floyd Rose setups and all that stuff. That that That's when you're really crazy. If you are really into guitar, investing in getting a locking, uh, uh, getting a Floyd, Floyd Rose is a specific type of setup. On It's very technical and very ridiculously out there. But if you are dedicated to doing what you're doing, get a Floyd Rose. You're probably going to need some help installing it, but get a Floyd Rose. But otherwise, the cheap and easy fix here, get a set of locking nuts. I, I, I think that would work. Uh, we have a really I- easy question from Circle Guy here. Uh, yeah. He was wondering if the blue USB microphone, Snowball, is a good microphone. Yes. Very good microphone. Very good microphone. Especially for the price. Absolutely. Yeah, although it's... although what he linked me to, it was like 68 pounds. And I know we can find it out here in the States for about $60. So you're kind of getting screwed on conversion rate here. Yeah, actually, I think it's gone down to around the $50 mark. Uh, on Amazon, it's still about 60 So oh, okay. I don't know, you know. But I'm sure you can find it for about $50. i am i am sure uh, it's coming down in price. I think B&H Photo has them, too. B&H Photo, yeah, they have them. J&R has it as well. Uh, let's move on to Kingdom 1232s. I'm paranoid in power supply units, and I feel I won't have enough power when I build this computer, even though I did mm. find a PSU calculator. Any suggestions? You will have enough power. Yeah. 
Most of the time. All right, so here, all right, so here's the basic computer setup. You've got a motherboard, a processor, RAM, a video card, and hard, hard drive. drive and optical drive. Yes. If you're running all of them at the same time, which you are usually. Well, I mean, if you're running the hard drive and the optical drive at the same time, 99% of the time you'll probably need about 400, maybe 500 watts. Uh, don't go 350. That's, that's really cutting it close if you've got a dedicated yeah. video card. Uh, 400 watts should be okay. 500 watts is plenty. Anything above that is generally overkill, unless you're going with an SLI setup or you have something that needs external power. Some video cards <clears throat> do call for the higher end power. I'd say well, the higher end card, like like for example, the dual co- the dual chip cards will require yeah. you know eight hundred nine hundred watts of power, right. but that's that's two video cards on one card. I'd know. say if you're getting a six fifty is nice. It gives you some play. It yeah. gives you some room. But if you're getting past seven hundred watts, you have too much. And six fifty a six fifty watt power supply, you can get that somewhere around the fifty sixty dollar mark. And that's a good one. That's Antec, Corsair. Uh, C Sonic, you can yeah. get that around around that mark. Yeah, six hundred yeah. six hundred watts is safe. Uh, is the safe area, I think. Six hundred six fifty. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Miyashima got back to us on the uh, on the graphics card issue, um, uh-huh. and we need to clarify something for him. Uh, he says my motherboard. What I don't understand. Uh, what I from what I understand won't support higher than DDR three. So anything higher than DDR three on my video card is not going to work for me. That's okay. Blatant false, and here's why. Yes. I'm sorry, I thought you were going to say that, Nash. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I, I know um, what you're going to say, but go uh, ahead. All right, so your motherboard has dedicated memory. Your video card has dedicated memory. They are two separate things. By the way, desktop memory and video card memory are two completely different completely things. Different. DDR3 desktop memory is not the same as DDR3 right. video memory. Um, so they actually have DDR5, DDR6, DDR7 video memory now, but you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter what your motherboard supports, other than it has to support PCIe 2 or 3 or whatever your video card requires. Think of it as your video mm-hmm. card is kind of a computer all by itself these days. The way they it set is. them up, it's got its own processor, it's got its own memory, it's got its own bus. I would love to see, I would, I would love to see a, a, a standalone video card with its own power supply, no PCIe, and a custom Linux build. I would love to see that. <laughs> the uh, I think that Apple's dis- that Thunderbolt thing, mm-hmm. they make one for for laptops. Oh, really? Yeah, they make a standalone graphics adapter. It's in nice. its own case that you plug in by that Thunderbolt connector. I'm sure someone could repurpose that for Linux. Uh, he also has oh, the other problem. Okay, just, just PCI Express. Now Miyashima also has the other problem of that being the only card he can afford. The others being a hundred bucks or so. Uh... Well, if that's the only one you can afford, your 400 watts are probably going to be all right. Yeah. I'll be completely honest with you. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're iffy about it, you can step down a little bit, and that way you're probably not going to need as much power. I'd also okay. check eBay. Yeah, check eBay, too. Uh, see if you can get a, new, get a new one. Don't get a used one. You could probably find a 550 on eBay in your price range. I'm willing to bet you can't. Yeah. Uh, Maxon 69, four monitor setup, two on ATI card, two on HDG 3000. Windows keeps resetting the resolution to 1280 by 720 on nine non-primary monitors. What do? That's not Windows. Yeah, I don't think that's Windows. That's... I think that's a driver conflict. Yeah. See, the one thing about using uh, multiple video cards is make sure they're all from the same manufacturer. Because otherwise, you have two different <clears throat> video driver sets going. La 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 la. No, I'm doing this. No, I'm doing this. They're gonna, they're gonna have a fight. Yeah, they're gonna. <laughs> Drivers gonna fight, man. Yeah, they 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 like to be the exclusive use. They don't like to share. They're yeah. not good at sharing. Um, it's even it's only possible to share since Windows Seven or Vista. Yeah. Yeah, and it's they're not very good at it. No. No. Uh, let's, um, let's see here. Uh, stream game footage instantly from Volgro Birdie. Here's my hardware information. Windows 7, 64-bit, 8 gigabytes of DDR RAM, i5, 720 quad, 266 gigahertz, ATI Radeon 6870, 100 megabytes up, 10, 100 megabytes down, 10 up. First question. 
Hope you guys want to know my problem supplied solution sadly didn't help. Okay, I record cooperative Let's Plays with some of the Mafia, and I used to send the group three to six people the game footage with nearly no delay by using the group video call trial of Skype by spamming accounts. This is not possible since they removed that feature. You guys suggested channeling the exploit feed through ManyCam as a simulated webcam into Google Hangouts. ManyCam does not recognize the exploit feed, not even after a complete Windows partition swipe. I don't Ooh. know why you did that, but okay. Uh, we've had some success with Google Hangout group video call with extended features thingy where I could share a screen with the rest of the people in the Hangout. This doesn't work well because the quality is below a standard stream from what I've been told by the choppy 360p, and they don't get any sound from the game. Additionally, the portal sentry style, are you still there, query, tends to crash the Hangout on my side. Yeah, other people lose footage. you got to either reinitiate broadcast or actively look out for it. It's not that much of a problem if you go for DOS games, but we're slowly slipping into horror game territory, Penumbra, with acoustical cues that are very important to the atmosphere. We can't go for stream because five-second delay in the individual lag synchronizes us either jumping at scares or reading out the character's lines. Uh, we do our stuff at the amateur level, so, fun, uh, so for fun and not cash, can't really shell out four to seven licenses for video conferencing tools, so hope you can suggest a, work, a workaround. Ouch! Okay, um... Hmm. That's a good yeah. one. My mini cam sees exploit, but it crashes as soon as I select it. So yeah, mini cam and exploit not you. working. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea how you made uh, exploit pipe into Google Hangouts or whatever you're using now. Penumbra, I'm sorry. See, assume me, Mr. Crow. Um, let's see here. I, you know, boy, it's so hard doing group Let's Plays. I mean, even on Google Hangouts, I, uh, this is all a total hack on my end. Complete yes. and utter hack. I mean, even Nash. Nash has been there, Skitch has been there, Final Freak has been there, sitting around watching me struggle with this shit, trying to get it to work. Uh, it is a... It's a complete hack on my end, so I'm not surprised my suggestion didn't work. That's honestly the best one we had at our disposal. Yeah, it really was. Right now, to do what you want to do, no one makes an out of the box solution. No, Nobody. You're, you're gonna you're gonna have to do what I did with my streaming setup and hack it together. Yeah. And nobody nobody made an out of the box solution for my stream. Nobody's made an out of box solution for getting video to Nash and, and Mark and everyone else. Uh, with the audio, you're going to have to hack it again. In terms of getting the audio to everyone over Google Hangouts, so guess what? It's virtual audio cable time. Uh, unless, of course, what you could do, I realize you said money is not going to be involved, but what you could do is get an SD... All right, is play your games on, if you have a laptop available, play your games on a laptop with a VGA output and get a SD capture card. You can convert the VGA to an SD signal and capture that. The capture card should be recognized by Google Hangouts. You can put the audio into the audio in on your computer and then use virtual audio cables to mix audio in and your microphone down to Google Hangouts. That's what you could do. That's probably a lot more expensive than you wanted to hear. Yeah. It's also probably the easiest solution at this point. It's, it's, I wish yeah. we had something better for you because all we, we, we've done the best we can and there are some limitations to what we're doing right now. I can't get my camera to work and everything I tried does yeah. not work. Oh, uh, there's a second question there, which uh, unfortunately that first answer is very disappointing. I really don't have much of a solution for you because you got to understand what we're doing uh, with the stream. We're... We're not just we're not on the cutting edge, we're not on the bleeding edge. We're on the soft tissue that's just that's yet to be cut by the razor. Okay? We we nobody has thought of us yet. Maybe no. XSplit has, but nobody's thought of us yet. So we're 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 far fucking ahead of the curve. Um now second question, uh, from what information I could snipe from you during regular streaming, it seems you're running a two computer streaming setup with the main machine used for gaming and stuff with at least two screens and a streaming machine that gets the video and audio feed from the main machine and relays that to us happy mafioso. What would the hardware requirements for the streaming machine be? A rough estimation. 
Okay. We're using above SD video, but not HD. We're using what's called 480 plus, which is actually, yeah. I think, like, uh, what is my resolution? It's some weird ass. It's some funky resolution that. 854 in... by. No, it's lower than 854. It's like 630 by 400 or some weird shit like that. Yeah. Um. So, uh, my requirement, the requirements for this right now, it, it right now it's a dual core machine with a really shitty graphics card, two gigabytes of RAM, and it runs like absolute ass. But it works because I'm, pu- I'm basically what I've got. I've pushed to the absolute maximum fucking limit. Yeah. Um, what I would need in terms of going up to HD, we're talking quad core processor, uh, at least four gigabytes. I'm thinking eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, a nice, decent video card, you know, fifty, sixty dollar range, not the ten dollar thing I've got in there now. Yeah. Um. At, at least two. I want at least two PCI X1 slots on the motherboard for two capture cards. Uh, that's necessary, I think. What I, What I would really like, by the way, <laughs> would really love a DVI frame grabber, because the down conversion makes a lot of green. <laughs> on the video capture mm. that I actually I've done a lot to work to filter out and it's taken months upon months of work to get that to work right but essentially on my machine I've got this is my gaming slash work machine I've got two monitors it's a two DVI output ATI card it's a 5000 series which works wonderfully even with modern games that set to max um, one the main screen which is actually what you're watching Nash on I'll switch to it right now uh, that's the main screen that's my main screen I look at uh, it, it is actually connected to a DVI splitter. One DVI out goes to the main screen. The other DVI goes to the DVI uh, to component scaler. That scales the video down uh, to 720p. It's a 1080p resolution right now. It scales it down to 720p uh, component video so the capture card can capture the component video. Now you can see why I want a DVI frame grabber so I can just connect the fucking DVI cable to it and be done with it. Uh, the problem with that is, any 1080p DVI frame grabber I've ever found has been A, over $1,000, and B, at 1080p, only captures at about 3 or 4 frames a second. It's a problem. Uh, I don't think you want 3 or 4 FPS while we're gaming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, there either needs to be some sort of scaling involved or something, and it's... <sighs> it's a lot of work. It's so much work. Can't you get an HDMI capture card for that? <sighs> no, because it's 1080p, not 1080i. Ah, damn it. Yeah. I've looked into HDMI capture cards, believe me. They o- they either go 720p or 1080i, but nobody does 1080p. Yet. Yeah, 1080p is 30, maybe. Probably yeah. another few years before we get there. Yeah. So, there's my story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, even I, when I do my show, it's very patched together, and it's no, I, I'm getting nowhere near 720. I think I'm like maybe 360, maybe 480. Um, I try to, to make it better by bumping the audio quality as much as I can. I use a an uh, analog compressor for, for the audio. I use a digital, uh, a plug-in compressor for the video and for the audio on the computer. I try and do my best, but it's running on a complete shoestring. And even to get my system going, I have a quad core, I have eight gigabytes of RAM, and it's it still nudges that quad core toward nearly sixty seventy percent, and that's at three hundred sixty p maybe. Mm-hmm. So, <sighs> alrighty, uh, real quick question before we head to the break. Uh, this is from Captain Free Time. Broke college student question, netbook or tablet? And if so, any brands in particular? I'm tired of taking laptops everywhere. Netbook. Uh, yeah, netbook, but the yeah. only problem being netbook's just a smaller laptop. If you're tired of taking netbooks everywhere, you may end up getting tired of taking a netbook everywhere. But to be fair, you'll probably get tired of taking tablets everywhere. The reason I recommend a netbook, Nash, is because as a college student, you're going to find it hard to get everything done you need to get done without that keyboard, without that yeah. mouse interface. And um, not only that, tablets do not have complete functionality. They, a netbook mm. has most basic computer functions functionality. Yes. It can run Office. It can run a browser. It can run stuff you download. Oh, it, yeah. Can, it, yeah. If, it can if run old games. Yeah. Tablets are not 
there yet, if they ever will get there. But they're not there yet. Tablets um, are great media consumption devices. Right. And what I mean by that is Netflix, I mean videos, I mean audio. Maybe even newspapers, maybe the web a little bit for you know browsing. Yeah. The problem with them is you can't... You can't. I don't want to say you can't, because you can be functional on them. The software's not there yet. And a lot of people recommend using, like, go to my PC to, to get PC functionality. Well, then what's the fucking point? Just get a netbook, you know? Um, if you want to type faster, using a touchscreen is not the way to type fast. No. Using, a, using a physical keyboard is you got that tactile feedback. Uh, and it, you think, well, I'll just get a, t- a keyboard for the tablet. Do you know the price for the right. keyboards on the tablet? You want, you want the ridiculous. keyboard for the tablet. I have the keyboard for the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Two issues. Number one, the piece of plastic... Doesn't include any USB ports or anything like that. Nope. Doesn't include an extra power cord or cable. It's nope. just a piece of plastic that attaches to the bottom of it. $70. Problem two. It's a keyboard. It shouldn't be $70. My high-end gaming huh. keyboard didn't cost me 70 fucking dollars. Problem number two. Android was not made for a physical input device. Nope. Neither was iOS. And you know what? I get a lot of repeat keys. I get a lot of different problems with the keyboard. It's just not functional enough for me. Even even the built-in keyboard on uh, on my phone, the, the 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 inboard one. Even they had they had to to I run a custom ROM because they had to hack the the keyboard stuff to make it work better. Because as out of the box, it doesn't work right. I mean, uh, even my parents who have a uh, who have an Asus triple uh, E triple E uh, transformer. Uh, they even they complain about the keyboard on it. Uh, yeah. They complain about being able to just write emails on it because they're like, well, how come when I press L, it has 17 L's at the end of it? I was like, I don't know. It does, it does that. It sucks. That's an Android 2.3 problem. Yeah, and well, Android 2.3. I, my Galaxy Tab's not 2.3, though. It's, it's an it's Android. Three. It's three. It's a honeycomb. It's a honeycomb. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's, a, it's an Android problem. I mean, they Yeah, never it's an Android it. problem. I, I don't... Four probably still has the same problem. Probably. Um, now, in terms of netbooks, the reason I advocate a netbook for a student is because you'll at least be able to do more... You'll be able to do more with it, uh, because tablets cost a lot of money. Netbooks cost less, and, you, and they do more. So yeah, a, I'm, tablet, a I, tablet will run you $700? Even hmm. even something like the Kindle Fire or something like $200, the... Uh, $200, but it's still, very, it's still very contained. Right. And plus, you can't... You're not going to get open office on it. You're not going to get a free office suite no. on it. And you're a student. You got to tablets cost way too much money. They are they are they're toys for the rich. Yeah. Or they're, that... they're toys for not not really the rich, but I mean they're toy they're, they're toys that they're 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 money sinks is what they are right now, to me at least. With the netbook, you are assured of compatibility. You know, you're you're assured sure. that it if it runs on a desktop, it's going to run on a netbook. Yeah. It might not run as fast. But it will run, and that doesn't count games. We're not talking anything near games here. But if heck, you can run Vegas, you can run Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere or something on a netbook. It's <laughs> oh, not going to run very fast, but it will run. You have compatibility across every platform. So there's that. All right. So we both recommend netbooks. Uh, Mark, I'm yeah. sh- what do you recommend? Yeah, netbook. Netbook. You can get a good one for. 200 300 See my yeah. my see my problem with recommending is I know every time I recommend netbooks over over tablets I get so many complaints and emails about it saying how I'm biased and I'm like you know have you <sighs> used one have you've used You're biased both. Have, common you, sense. have you tried to use them outside of watching videos have you tried to yeah. use them to compile email messages from like you know 20 or different places. Have you used them, by the way, for students? A lot of students have uh, online systems now for their classes. And not just online classes, but you have to use an online system for yeah. your class. Have you tried using tablets with those? Because they ain't configured for them. It's kind of hard. Uh, so I spent a day with nothing but this. Ooh. Didn't work out too well, no. No. Hate... So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick by my I'm gonna stick by my guns and go with ta- and go with netbooks. They're not there yet. I mean, even even tablet browsers are not. Try try just selecting a specific link without making this, the 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 web page tremendous just to pick that one little link because when you touch, oh, did you mean this link way over here? No, I meant that one right there. <laughs> it's annoying. 
But the, but again, like I said, those that's my opinion. That's Nash's opinion. That's Mark's opinion. If you ta- if you want a tablet, get a tablet. I don't don't let us yeah. stop you. All right. Um, yeah. But that's kind of why we're kind of against tablets. I mean, netbooks aren't fantastic at anything, but they're at least lighter than notebooks. They uh, they are x86 compatible, and you can run you know x86 binaries open office. Yeah. I think that's kind of important for a student is is the cost here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people ignore the cost when they talk about tablets. Well, there's hardly any open source programs out there that you can really reliably download and use. And open source is forbidden. Oh, open source is forbidden in Apple. I know that on um, Android Marketplace. I don't know if it's forbidden. No, um, it's not. Android not. Not not on Android Marketplace, um, and I know in Windows Marketplace they actually have an inclusion uh, in the licensing terms saying, saying that the GPL and select uh, open source licenses actually trump the Windows license in the marketplace, which is really cool. Um, but you're but you, as far as getting the most t- functionality and value for what you're spending on one of these devices, get a netbook. Because heck, with the, with the money you save, back in your dorm room, you can spend another hundred dollars for a monitor. You can spend another twenty bucks for a wireless keyboard and mouse. And hey, you know what? You're not going to play Skyrim on it, but you'll play TF2 on it. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, we've been doing this for a little over two hours now, so I think it's time we take another time short to break. Pee. Time to pee. Time to get some drinks. Time to stand up and stretch. Holy crap! That was another two-hour part of the marathon. Woo! Get your questions prepped. Start tweeting them at Lord Cat. Uh, start... Maybe we should go back to the forum questions. Yeah, we should go back to the forum questions too. We'll go, yeah. we'll, we'll do forum questions next too as well. But uh, if we get really good questions on Twitter, we'll we'll do them as well. Okay. But it's time for us to take a break because holy crap, that was two unbroken hours. I mean, you're not going to get this type of entertainment on television, are you, folks? Well, you could just watch a Christmas story over and, and over, over and, and over, over and over again. <laughs> All right, we're going to take 15. We'll be back.